right. Now are you doing it? Not yet. Let's see. It's about to start. Okay. There it goes. Now. Yep. Yeah. Now we're now we're live. Welcome, uh, everyone. And uh, yep, I had a week off uh, from the painting. A lot of other stuff. It was very busy. Um, meetings. Um, other preparations for future paintings. Um, so we are back um, working on the Annunciation and uh, we're going to be working on the Dove today. So if you've ever wanted to learn how to paint uh, birds and do so successfully, uh, we're going to be working through that. Um, I hope uh, this is valuable to you and welcome. It's great to have you. I'm going to start off by, uh, as I have uh, the past few days uh, working on this painting, has been uh, just taking a little makeup sponge here and I'm gonna dip it in my this is a walnut oil gel right here uh, on the palette and um, I'm just gonna rub it in uh, a little bit so that I can kind of see some of the values around around the area that I'm gonna be working on today so that's nice and rich and ready to be painted. This, this walnut oil also brings a little bit of uh, a viscous surface with which to lay the paint down so that I'm not just painting immediately on uh, dry. Dry, you know what I don't have? I don't have a, uh, I think I've got a fresh um, assistant, uh, assistant Sean. I think I have a fresh uh, roll of uh, paper towels in the upper cupboard there, the very top, I think I do. It's one thing I'm missing, didn't get set up. You, hey, you'll notice this is uh, the first time we've got uh, a palette cam. Um, so hopefully that is also helpful. I have uh, cleaned it thoroughly and this, this way, I mean, yeah, you know, it's like, Am I, am I a real artist? My palette isn't dirty. I get that, but that doesn't really help you if you're watching, learn how to mix or see the colors as they are. So everything is cleaned up. Uh, you'll see to the right, I've selected, you know, a handful of just pick uh, colors that I've mixed uh, for previous areas. And I just set those aside, saving them. Uh, they're all pretty dry by this point. Um, and uh, that's all right. So I'm gonna just wipe off the excess oil. Uh, I don't need a lot of it on there. I just wanna, wanted enough to kind of get me going. And um, here we go. So I like to start off about the, the same way each time. And that is with uh, mixing, mixing my black. So my mixed black is uh, uh, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. Yep, set them in the reverse. That's okay. You know better. Uh, and yep, I'll just kind of mix mix these up into a nice uh, black. So I've got a black to work with now. Yep, that looks good. I can kind of pull a little harder and see. Okay, it's a little on the warm side. So if I really want to neutralize it, I can pull just a little more blue in. I hadn't shown this process for the previous days uh, because, well, I didn't have two cameras, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see if the computer and our streaming, uh, if everything is up to task today, how our internet is, and so on and so forth. Bless you. Have my son Ernest in the studio today. Say hi, Ernest. Hi. So, um, who knows? Who knows what sort of things we might get up to today? Um, all right. So I have a, a black point now, um, and really now I'm, I'll, I'll kind of look, and you can see in uh, the left corner here, uh, you, you can see what I'm gonna be working from. It looks a little different. Uh, this picture is maybe a little cooler in the video than the one I'm working from, but at least you, you'll get the idea of kind of where I'm going and what I'm working from. And so, uh, yeah, we're just really trying to up the overall quality and make, um, make things uh, work significantly better. I, um, so, I, so I've made my black. Now I'm gonna focus on just working, uh, creating a handful of values that are what I, I hope to be a little warmer, 
because uh, it looks like the underside, at least uh, in my source, so that there's kind of some warm, uh, warmer yellowy uh, grays. And so we're gonna start kind of building up some of those as well. So I made my black, I'm gonna have to mix more of it. I already know that, so, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna pull in some white. I'm gonna start working on, how much is this shaking around there, Sean? Getting crazy? I mean. Oh, the palette? Yep. Yeah. No, it's not bad. Not I'm bad. Just staying within screen. Okay, well, I'm just watching it wobble, so. You can kind of see it, but it's not super distracting. I think that part of it is, uh, I'll set up the tripod differently next time. Um, so here's just a gray that I mixed. It's a little on the warm side, uh, and I'm gonna need it to probably be darker. So I'm gonna just grab, you know, a little more of my black and and mix, darken up that. And also that increases the volume. We're not gonna need a whole lot of paint and probably not a whole lot of dark because there are very few significantly dark spaces. Um, uh, here on the on the bird that are they go really really dark so you know that's a nice uh, let's I'll, I'll just take you know a little bit there um, this might be kind of my mixing pool so I'll, I'll start to just set aside some of these uh, premixes so right now I haven't really tried to do much else uh, except just create a bit of a gray scale so I'm going to keep doing the same thing sometimes this um, this is a little tacky this uh, uh, lead white, and I will take just a little bit of the uh, walnut oil gel, add it to it, and uh, that just smooths it out just a tad. Um, thins it down some too, so it's not gonna be quite as uh, opaque. And I'm just gonna mix a bit of a value scale here. And I'll, I'll dip into the other colors, but for now, we're just gonna, we're gonna do this. And that just gives me a few, um, a few spots. Is A72 the one that was here that one time? I think maybe, I don't know. Well, was it? A72 Mastery Summit Subhash says, hey. 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 Hey, glad to have you, welcome. Uh, A72, if you have questions, uh, I'm all ears, let me know. Right now I'm just doing some pre-mixing, getting a few pools of color together. Um, I'm, I'm big on my mixing. I, I really like to, as you can see here, work from only a handful of color. Um, and I find out, I find that it, uh, it works a lot better. Uh, you get a lot more unity in your piece, the fewer tube colors you have out on your palette. And of course you can go even more limited. There's a lot of uh, options out there. So here's some good, uh, mid range values, uh, that, that I have prepared. And, um, I really need to get some significantly lighter values. And I'm looking at my source, at least in this case, and, um, they're a little warmer. So I'm just gonna get a dig in here. Cindy Batila said, hi there, getting excited to watch. Hi Cindy, welcome, glad to have you. Yeah, and A72 was the guy with the, the packet. And the awesome, uh, hey, thanks for coming back and I appreciate you being here. And again, sorry about what happened. Uh, you know, we kind of shared with me. So I, I, hope, uh, I hope things are, are going better. I, w I won't say any more, uh, but I hope things are uh, going better. So you, so you might have noticed there, I just added a little bit of um, uh, yellow ochre in and um, just thinking, okay, uh, I want this just to be a tad warmer. And, and you can see it's just a little lighter. I'm gonna do the same again. I'm gonna, you know, I, this is kind of my mixing pool. So it already has some of this in it and I have some on my palette knife and I'm just gonna keep going and let, letting it lighten. Uh, A72 asks, how long will you be here? Um, for, for this session, uh, probably for another hour or uh, two, but probably, probably more an hour, hour and a half is what I'm guessing, this session. Uh, but we'll come back this evening. Uh, well, I should say 
probably even evening where you are, my friend, and um, and then uh, afternoon here uh, in the central states. So I'm here for the day. We're gonna we are gonna knock out this bird if uh, if I can help it. That made a funny sound. That was a funny sound. Kind of does that sometimes. All right, so you know, now we're kind of working our way around. There's uh, there's some really intense warm yellows underneath there because you know lights coming from behind the feathers. We're getting some of that really interesting color. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can make a little bit of a warmer yellowy white. Um, you'll notice that I still haven't dug deep into the really intense color yet and um, you know those are those are there and you can pull them out but you know they they uh, I, I will I'm always hesitant and I don't want to work too too much or go, go too far um, it's hard to pull it back you can always add more intense color sometimes it's hard to pull that intense color back so here we go a little more of a an orangey orangey white and I'm just gonna kind of keep keep going at this. And and of course Sean's here, moderator, so it goes without goes without saying. The man who really gets it done. See, look how far that goes. That was just the tiniest bit of yellow, and yet, you know, now it's it's pretty wild. <laughs> you're saying, that you're saying, pretty. yeah, you think it's pretty? It is. I mean, it adds some color, right? Because we really haven't had much color on here yet. Yeah. So this is this is kind of my my mixing first thirty or so minutes um, that that happen anytime I'm working on. Um, a painting. Sean, is that most recent, is that getting cut off down here? Or is no, that, no, you're good. Oh, I still got like another couple inches underneath that bottom. Yellow. All right, cool. Yeah, Cindy said, still waiting for you to mix the paint. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's uh, totally, <laughs> It. <laughs> this is a, a, a long process. So, so I'm happy with my, some of my lighter values here that just uh, changed slightly. And I do have some in t more intense whites and I'm probably going to uh, dip almost directly into my, uh, my lead white when it, when it comes down to it. So I wanna make some warmer darks. So I'm gonna come back in, grab a little bit of burnt sienna just so that's, that's a, also a pretty color. You like that one too? So this is, because there's some uh, areas that are underneath that are a little more, you know, brown, warm, orange, orange, mid-range, dark. Um, and let's see here. Okay, I'm just make sure. I'm gonna pull the rest of my dark in here and make a. Cool color. Yeah. If you mixed all of those colors together, I bet it would make a really pretty color. Well, it'd make a nice neutral, so, and that would be, uh, I do like neutrals, so you're right, it would be pretty. <laughs> I'm not, uh, I don't think there's a single um, intense bright color in our home that I know of. <laughs> well, the brightest color most we have is the, the sun, oof, that is a bright color. The sun is intense. Yeah, but the brightest color you have on there is that red. That red? Yeah. It's just, yeah, that's it's so, Ernest. so that, that's it. Ernest, great point. So uh, when I use, when, when I use terminology, um, I like to use light and dark when talking about value. I like to use, uh, Intensity or chroma when I talk about what Ernest was talking about there. He's talking about bright. You know, what, what does bright mean? Well, uh, you look at this and say, wow, that's a bright color. It's actually uh, an intense color. So it's, yeah, it's very the, saturated. 
yellow is pretty light too. Yeah, that's intense too. Yep. Yeah. So and it's also light. So there's a couple of things. It has a lot of chroma, and it and it's a very light color too. And also, blue is kind of light on the one that's red. Yep. And that one, that one is light, and this and this one's a darker blue, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then you have some different kind of blue, like over on the side where there's lots of gray and black and those other colors that Mary doesn't like so much. <laughs> Mary doesn't like gray and black and black. doesn't like gray and black, man. I mean... Those are the good ones. Huh? Those are the good colors. So you might see um, there just was a bit of, uh, I think it's linseed oil, just extra. It's going to make a mess of things. Oh, that's right. All right, so I need to so I wipe down um, my pout my pout knife, and I'm gonna mix up a little more black. Brown's kind of dark. It's light black, but only when you mix brown and light brown, it makes middle brown. Yeah. To actually try to mix brown and. There you go. A little wisdom from Ernest for all you painters out there. Okay. You need middle brown to mix. Light brown and black and kind of a kind of closer to black brown and then you'll make middle brown to use it on stuff. So, so who who just joined that uh, thinks that that's what my voice sounds like? That uh, that, a, that a child. Uh... We lost like everybody. <laughs> We're down to like one. We were up to like five. Wait, we only got five people watching this live stream. Not anymore. So, and granted, they want to see the action too. So, I I don't expect people to, you know. Well, this this is the this is the part that makes the thing happen. So I mean, like the dark reds are mostly on the dark side. The dark side. Cause some, but okay. Dark, I... dark blue and dark red. Some of those dark ones are on the light side. It is true. All right, so I think uh, that's this is a really good starting point. This is a, a good point at which to say, okay, um, I've achieved uh, a few, but, uh, still dripping. Um, I've achieved a few colors that'll just kind of help me, and I'm gonna mix into those, and I'm gonna mix them together, I'm gonna mix other colors into them, um, but that just gives me a little bit of a base uh, with which to uh, begin working on the entire uh, piece. So the last thing I need to do is I've got a little Ernest. I'm talking right now. Um, the last thing I have to do is I have to create a little bit of the background color that I'm going to have to work into and around to make uh, to make this uh, look, look finished. Because anytime you're working on such a big painting as this. Like you're going to have areas where you finish and be up, butt up next to areas that are unfinished. And in those in between spaces, you're always going to end up with uh, unfinished areas that are uh, even, you know, for instance, I mean, you can still see the ground layer in between. That's that kind of lighter brown that's in between the white and the background color. You know, that's that's going to be there. So a lot of times I like to mix uh, opposite uh, ends of the spectrum. So uh, this is essentially a darker orange, burnt sienna, and then we've got a uh, we've got a blue here that is on the kind of gr a little bit on the greener side, a little cooler side. Um, and so being opposite ends of the color wheel, you know, they 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 tend to neutralize each other. They're still going to make a little bit of a green. Uh, color when it, when it's all said and done, um, but I, I like to kind of mix complements to make to make my colors to make my neutrals, and I, I think there's within that there's a lot of intensity color intensity even on, even though it, is, it reads as a neutral, it's still uh, very much um, feels intense uh, and and full of chroma. In Chroma, we talked about that color intensity. 
And you know that's that's our goal. Cindy would like to know how she can find the beginning of the painting. Ah yes, uh, Cindy. Uh, so if you uh, if you go back through my channel, you can see we have documented every single part of this uh, of the making of this painting. And uh, it's just a matter of uh, looking up on on my my YouTube channel, uh, Annunciation, and uh, you can find. Um, every step of the way, <laughs> anything and everything. So, and so I think, uh, I think I'm ready to actually put some paint down. Um, select a few brushes here. So, really the lightest color is white. Yep. To, to those other three colors I've already said. I mean, yep, you're, two yeah. favorite colors that are the, that are um, with the light colors, two of my favorite colors. Yeah, and Ernest makes a good point. I, not that this is completely accurate, but for the most part, I like to arrange my tube colors from light to dark. Granted, this, this guy needs to probably sit in here somewhere. Um, but uh, light to dark, because uh, I'm just I'm always thinking about um, about you know how that uh, how that works together. Uh, so all right, we've got a couple of brush selections. This uh, new, this setup temporary setup is a little a little troublesome. And also, before he has to paint it, he has to look at it while he's painting the first little bit at it, and then he doesn't to look at it much, but then he just has to paint it around. Yep, that is the truth. So I've got um, I've got a couple of mediums here. I've got the walnut oil gel. I've got a Venetian medium, uh, and uh, those are both available with uh, Rublev colors, uh, natural pigments. You can check those out, and um, and then I also have uh, Chelsea. Um, classical studio their lavender spike oil medium and I'm gonna be dipping into that here a little bit so um. but if you have any kids that have water paint you can teach them how to paint just like my dad yeah there you go you can you can learn I mean I don't know if there is a better uh, advertisement to, that I can give so uh, so here we go we've got uh, We've got a little bit of, you know, I've already established, this is the underpainting here. So I've already established most of the lights and darks to at least give myself a little bit of a bedrock onto this, what what will be the final layer. And I've, uh, I'm gonna probably start right in here. It's one of the darkest points. There are some dark, darker edges along here too. Um, there's some invention I'm gonna have to do with regard to um, the, the bird in flight, the, the bird I took a picture of, uh, it was a stuffed dove. Um, it just goes to show you, always, always make friends with, uh, various museums. Uh, you never know when you're going to need access to some good taxidermy. And, um, and so, uh, I, th they allowed me to come in and, and take pictures and yeah, I treated them to some dinner. You know, you, you get a, Gotta, gotta grease the wheels a little bit too. Um, but yeah, great opportunity. Um, until I start really getting this down, I'm not gonna know how I'm doing. And, and bear in mind, the picture that I have uh, up on the live stream looks a little different uh, from, from what I'm working from. It's the same one, but I think there's some color discrepancies. So I'm gonna start building in these, uh, these darker values here. Um, Sort of laying those down, and you notice I, I kind of I was taking this uh, this darker value here. Um, I don't want to get too lost, lost edge against the uh, the background, but we'll we'll see. Um, There's some some black feathers here that I'm gonna have to decide whether I want to keep them or not, and I, I I don't know. I probably won't. So I think it's good to do two different things, kind of establish which is the kind of darkest point, which 
you know, these areas were about, there's a few other feathers that, again, I'm, I'm an artist, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a photographer, and I'm not trying to just make a photograph, I'm trying to make a painting. And I'm interested in more of an entirely white dove, um, uh, just for the purposes of, you know, this is the Annunciation, um, and the dove is embodying the Holy Spirit. And so um, I'm going to aim for uh, more of a, of a completely white dove. So we're going to start there, laying in those few darks. So uh, what I like to do is I like to keep a handful of uh, brushes. So this will be kind of this brush will probably be basically my for all these shadow areas. I'll work with this brush. I try not to keep an open uh, cup of mineral spirits or anything around, just because. I mean, you heard, you heard my son, he's in the room. I'm working too, I'm thinking about my health and I hope you're thinking about your health too. And you're using materials that are VOC free, things that, that don't have, uh, they're not emitting uh, off gassing things that are gonna harm you. Um, so that's what I like about the Chelsea Classical Studio Lavender Spico Medium. That's what I'll be using and it's uh, safe to breathe in. Um, I, there is a little bit of turpentine in the Venetian medium, but you know, for this pea size amount, um, there's going to be very little uh, being off gas. So I talked about a darker brush. I'll also do the same with kind of establishing a lighter brush. Um, and yeah, this one will probably do. So I, I will also then come in and just establish some of these really intense lights. Um, I like to use the Venetian medium with the lights because it itself has uh, crushed leaded crystal glass in it. And uh, I think that again, it creates, you know, these really, in really, really intense lights as light kind of refracts in, inside the oil. So here we are, we have built up some of those lightest lights. And in my purpose in doing that is just to say, okay, here is my light, here is my dark. Everything else is gonna fall somewhere in the middle. Um, so I don't, I was just hunting for those very specific light lights and dark darks, and that's it. And now I can kind of make a decision on how the rest works. Because everything else is not as light um, and I can really, really kind of goop this on and it'll be just fine. Hey, so A72 is back and he wants to talk about his story, but I feel like we should probably just do it in the chat so that way you can focus on. Sounds good. Yep. Yep. You do the thing. Thanks, Sean. Yes. You can, uh, you feel free to, Sean is, uh, he's the man and he will, he will, uh, yeah, he'll do the thing. I'm gonna let you focus on painting. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. So moderators, totally worth it. All right. Especially when they just volunteer. <laughs> Not really. He has all of these paint he can different use. He only can use one at a time and then he has to wash his brush to get another different kind of paint. Sometimes. So, so I'll, I'll so I didn't like, so I didn't like, I put this down. I was like, uh, this reads too cool, not quite warm enough. So this is a great moment for me to just kind of grab some of the other color here that was, um, and just make it a little more what I'm looking for. And that's, and that's it, you know, that got a little closer. I do a lot of mixing directly on to the canvas. So I'll, I'll, I'll see something and I'll say, oh yeah, that's, that's how that looks or that's how that's gonna work or, uh, and I'll go to lay it down and that's not it at all. And my point to that is like, hey, don't, you know, don't worry about getting it just right. <laughs> just just uh, get, it, get it blocked in. Um, and also, he paints real slow. It takes one. <laughs> I am slow, that is the truth. Yeah, because when you paint, it's real slow. Because you have to get it just right and looks just like the picture. So oh. you only color real slow to make it get in 
to the bird to look at, make it look the same. Yep, it's uh, it is true. It is a long process, um, and so there there was kind of some warmer yellow colors here, and I'll continue to block these out. And this is mostly, this section is mostly just me getting some fresh paint on um, so that I can begin really making some serious decisions about what's happening. Um, and also, even little pictures, it takes a long time. It's true. Yep, the bigger the picture, the longer it takes, that's for sure. And even the small ones take a lot lot long time too um but such such is uh my lot you can uh you can sense the the the, the boredom <laughs> the reality oh what 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 i put my kids through they always have to be dealing with this guy's taking his painting is to stay too long. I know, and you can just get a camera, just take a picture with the camera. Yeah. So my my goal in this phase is to just keep searching for the kind of lights and darks and I'll be bouncing back and forth between these two brushes. I'm not washing them. I might wipe them off. Uh, I've got some paper towels down here. I might wipe them off a little bit, but that's all I'm going to do. Um, because I, I like to keep, I like to keep it dirty. So, um, that's just to me, I think what looks works better. Um, and, uh, So we're just trying to establish those, get that in place. A little darker. And, and when you're doing animals, you're painting animals, you really want to keep, if you want to keep it loose, uh, you know, yeah, I've got some individual feathers to paint up here. I'm still only going to do it, do so much. And then that's it. It's a, it's a pretty fine line between kind of like overdoing it uh, and, you know, and it being, still being a painting, still feeling like a painting. Um, so, so this is nice, you know, I, I talked about having this underpainting as just this, this bit of, um, it's a kind of a foundation to, to, to what I'm trying to achieve. And it is immensely helpful uh, just to have s some of those values already there. Because um, I don't have to paint op opaquely, opaquely, uh, or opaque. Um, I can, uh, I can just let some of that layering just, just work. Just, and that's, that's actually when oil is at its most interesting and in my opinion is when you're letting some of those color layers uh, do their thing. Le leaving some layers, allowing others to be there. I'm going to have to uh, hop online and do a little more research to find exactly um, how a dove tucks its uh, feet in when it's flying. So that's uh, that will that will come later. I mean, I have a little book I can write into. Yeah. 
that. Yep, we try to try to have um, the home studio is always somewhat equipped with things for for children to uh, to work on, to work with. So even even while I'm working, I'm trying to keep it loose. I am going to have to get specific quick quick Yeah, probably not that dark. I don't need that that dark, but I do need It's kind of uh, a warm orangey space here. See, that just happened. I di I didn't kind of wipe my brush off well enough and I dipped back into some of the paint that was already on it. So I'm just taking a little bit. I mean, this is such so such a little bit amount of the cad red, mixing it with this. And you can see how intense it is as soon as I put it down. So um, this color is kind of that light that's happening behind. We're building up some of the necessary bits of information for that to be successful. And I'm using the thinnest amount of paint here because I've got an underpainting and I've got other things going on and, uh, and that all works for me. Now at some point I have to kind of make a decision on, all right, what am I going to keep? Uh, on this initial block in uh, what's what's really going to work how I can just keep some of the brush energy like last thing I want to do is um, make this a perfectly rendered painting of you know that with exact representation and you know all that it, I mean, that's, that's not the purpose of painting. You know, we, we want to paint can do certain things and we want to make sure that we're keying into that. Now's a good time for me to find maybe a third brush where I can, um, maybe Ernest, maybe you can draw a bird there on your paper. Maybe you can look at this bird, see if you can draw it. Can you make those shapes? Um, I'll take kind of a third brush for some of these intermediate uh, values I, I see here. Um, they're definitely kind of turning a little little yellow. So I'm gonna use some yellow ochre. Um, and really this stage for me is just hopping around. How does this, how does this look like the bird? Ah, good shapes, good shapes. I mean, I didn't draw it exactly as it, but I'll try again. Well, it's a, it's a hard thing to learn, drawing. So I can't stress enough, if, uh, if you're not already, uh, you know, obviously um, this, I don't have the taxidermy here with me. Uh, I have some old source material that I took. Um, <laughs> But if you uh, find yourself uh, the opportunity to draw and paint from life, you should always do so. Um, there's there's a lot that you learn in that process that you just you can't really get any from anything else. Um, it's, uh, so I'd highly, highly recommend if you can find figure drawing classes uh, in your town councils or if you've got other local art entities uh, that offer that sort of thing you should definitely do it um, to 
to work from life. It really teaches teaches you a lot, and um, then it allows you to become an old uh, a, an old crony who only works from photographs after a while. This so. one look? Oh. A, li a little better. No. Huh? No. The tractors fell down. <clears throat> Diego Miguel said these wings are amazing. We've only just begun. Oh yeah, he's got, he's gonna make them look even <laughs> better. But but thank you, that's, we, that's good. Um, so I'm noticing, I think it's mostly just, uh, it's an eff, kind of effect of the eye. Um, me just looking at this image, there's a, it's kind of a, a thin blue line. It'll be good too, because that'll, that'll just create this, this soft, area you know i i have uh i have astigmatism and so uh you know i i tend to like these uh or, well i think it, i see them kind of no matter where i am but, but yeah those those are the effects that it's like well that's probably not in life but uh, I, I like some of the energy that it creates this uh this kind of intense blue line Against um, against some of these darks and these whites, uh, and and that's and that's kind of where where the artistry where it comes in. Where again, I, I'm not trying to just recreate. I'm trying to I'm I'm trying to uh, make a painting, make something that is interesting because it is consisting of a bunch of uh, tube colors that we have out here. Yeah. I found a brush just behind the truck. Oh, thanks. Pick it up. Appreciate it. it. The other brushes. Studio assistant today. If I could finish the way you were just beginning, my life would be happier. <laughs> That's, well, uh, you can. Uh, I, I, you know, there's, um, man, a great story is, uh, is, is, an artist by the name of Julie Beck. She teaches for, I think it's the Academy of Realism in Boston. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Or oh, I'm not gonna remember the exact um, exact name. She she has shared, if you go to, if you find her, Julie Beck, if you find some of her work, cause she shares some of her initial paintings and uh, she, she, sh she just shows how far she's come in her process and uh just it's amazing like and you realize that it, it is teachable and 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 she has she has done it um so diego you can definitely do it brother so is she the 15th general president of the relief society of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints from 2007 to 2012 no um, Julie, Julie Beck, Academy, look up uh, Academy of Realists Boston, I think, Academy of Realism Boston. Um, if you mix two bright colors together, you'll just make a really bright color. Sometimes, sometimes uh, they, they neutralize one another, so that's a, that's a good point. Um, sometimes the colors might create a really intense color, but other times they, they might neutralize one another where all of a sudden uh, they the chroma is, is nearly gone. Um, so, it's good. But sometimes when you mix lots of black colors, it might make even a light color. I mean, that's more with light colors. If you mix lots and lots and lots of light colors, you make a really dark color. This is our, uh, our resident expert, um, and uh, if you if you don't have kids yet, uh, just wait. <laughs> um, yeah, wait. I'm their oldest kid. At, they have. Yep, we. This you're the oldest one we have. Yeah, I'm five, and I I paint with my brushes. At the art table downstairs. So there's a there's a good point. Uh, we we have we have an art table, and uh, that's where, yeah where the kids uh, can.
can work on their creations, color, coloring books, painting. And the, and yeah. the littlest kid is only four. Oh, yeah. She just turned four. Just turned four. And, uh, and I'll Happy be birthday. six in the last of August. Yeah, so we've got a uh, got couple of August birthdays. So we just celebrated one, we're about to celebrate another one. And you know what? Even my birthday is in August, but we don't talk about that very much. But Yeah, but... And, um, well, we celebrated my favorite grandpa's birthday after my sister's birthday. His is the 8th, hers is, um, the 7th. Yep. How much, how much more do you want to know about our family? Uh, you, you can find out. <laughs> yeah. Our mom usually is in the kitchen doing stuff, oh, making my. stuff, and like that. Oh, man. And... But Dad, somehow I found Legos in here. I've already found one Lego, now I've found two Legos. And I'm trying to keep them where they stay safe. Thanks. Just right in here. Okay. Because this has a zipper that zips all the way. I'm just sitting here with a backpack. It has lots of cars in it. And then I'm sitting in front of So I, I switched up to uh, a smaller brush. Yeah, uh, Cindy wants to know what brand of brushes. Yeah, I, I have a, <laughs> I, I always feel like that, uh, I appreciate the question, Cindy. Um, I don't know. I. I've, Honestly, I've just kind of used whatever I've had on hand for many years. In fact, I had a, I had a nice opportunity to uh, meet someone who used to be a rep for Windsor Newton, and she was basically ending um, her painting career, and she was like, hey, I've got all of these brushes. Why don't you just take them? And, and so I did, and I just used whatever. Uh, I, you know, I've done... I've done the whole gamut, so I've I've spent a ton of money buying really nice brushes, the nicest that you know everyone loves and, and praises, and you know sure yeah I mean there's there's something nice about it, um, but at the same time, let's see I might have a phone call. Hello. Hello, this is your twenty first Amazon Oh, pharmacy call. See, this is the sort of stuff happens in life. Yep, it's ready. Cool. This is the sort of thing you get with a live stream. Anything can happen. All right. I think I was, I don't remember what I was talking about. Uh, Your brushes. Brushes, thanks. Brush Je cheapers, yes. yes. Uh, so, so in, in the end, I've just landed on these. Uh, these are, I can kind of hold it out here. They're Utrecht. They're a mixed synthetic, and uh, this is their 239 series. They have, um, just depends, 239 series. Those are the ones I've really landed on that I like. I feel like they keep their shape a while, um, and um, I'm, I don't know. They're just, they're just the ones, and you know, it, ultimately, other, uh, uh, people are gonna be mad at me for saying this, uh, so you can you can give out all you want and about it. Uh, it just other. I mean, you you can buy some really really bad cheap brushes out there, and you can, you can get some stuff that is like you know in a watercolor kit or something, and obviously that's going to be garbage. Um, but uh, you know, honestly. It doesn't matter too much. It's, like I said, someone's gonna be really mad I just said that and they're gonna get me, go get me online. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it doesn't, th there is a level to which it matters and then there's just a level that which just doesn't matter. Um, so, but, but I like these, I feel like they keep their shape, they last a while. Um, and um, for me, they've, they've uh, kind of landed and a bit of my favorite here, Utrecht, um, it's U-T-R-E-C-H-T and uh, 239.
as, as a series. So. A72 wants to know, is there a difference between the words chroma and saturation? Uh, not, nec not necessarily. Um, I, I mean, they're inter inter interchangeable to a degree. So when you, it kind of just probably depends on who's your instructor and, um, and, uh, and, who, and who they, uh, and, and what they prefer to say. Um, I, I've always, I've really liked the word chroma. Uh, that's always been like my favorite, but some that that doesn't seem to work as universally as like using the word saturation. Uh, you could also think of uh, color intensity. That's that's another really good way to put it. This color color intensity. Um, um, <laughs> So like, so color intensity is another good way to put it. So, and if you, so for instance, if I have my, my CAD red here, that's a very intense color. It's very saturated. Now, if I start adding other colors to it, obviously its intensity will wane. It's pure, it's purity, it's color purity will also start to wane and it will start to move toward um, a more of a low saturation or a low intensity color. Um, and I, that might be a way to kind of think about it. <coughs> Cindy says, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was probably kind of a not very satisfying answer. Um, but um, I, I, uh, but I've just found that it doesn't matter too much. I did put my foot in my mouth one time because I, I taught a class and encouraged, I said, I don't care what brush you buy, just come to the class, it's fine. It doesn't matter, None, you know. And someone came to the class and they had, uh, they had brought some really bad brushes. <laughs> I mean, just like everything that I just talked about, like really bad kind of watercolor um, kit, quality brush brush pack that, that was purchased and uh, I had to say oh I'm sorry I really didn't even think this was possible <laughs> that a brush could uh, respond to this poorly so I've always used at least something of worth so I guess let it be known you can buy something that they'll just really um, ruin your efforts uh, but uh, for the most part, if you get a get a decent brush, um, it's it's gonna be fine. You're just gonna paint. Paint you what want, you see. You won't have to throw away that brush very much. Yeah, then that's that, and then you won't that's have a good to buy very much brushes. Yeah, I mean that's and that's true because like you know like because because I. Um, you know that's one of the reasons why I like these uh, synthetics by uh, by Utrecht is like I I don't have to um, I don't have to replace them near as much uh, and you know I, I like I like sharp edges and so uh, to when when I start to lose those and they start to get splayed which I abuse brushes because I don't clean them uh, you know I, I mean I do clean them at the end of my session. Uh, but I don't clean them when I'm uh, 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 you know like I, like I said I don't have uh, a bit of mineral spirits out here that are um, like that I'm dipping them in and cleaning them all out so really the, the paint gets all the way down to the ferrule most times and I, I mean I, I just I abuse brushes um, so, so I like these. They seem to stand stand up. Cindy would like to know where you found the beautiful duck photo. You actually took it, didn't you? Yeah, I took it. Yeah, that's so. It's it's mine. Um, I I, uh, I there there's a pair of doves at uh, like a there's a smaller town here to the north of Wichita that I was uh, I had the opportunity to. Um, I don't know, Cash. I think it, we, were, we were doing a wedding or something, and anyway, we were in in the in the town. We were in the museum, and uh, I took a bunch of pictures of just what they had on hand, 
thinking uh, it might be good to just know what they have. Um, and so I, uh, I just called them up and I said, hey, you've got these pair of doves and um, I, I could really use the, the, these for reference material. And, um, and I said, hey, can I come out? And they said, sure. And so I came out and they let me even, they handled it, of course, being a museum, but um, they, uh, they worked with me and allowed me to uh, get some good references. And I've used these in multiple paintings. So yeah, I was able to get the light I wanted on them so that when I kind of come back and work on them, I've got, uh, I've got good stuff to work from. A72 said, while matching colors, what's your thought process in terms of value, chroma, hue? Beautiful. Uh, great question. It's like, it's like you, it's like you're, you know exactly what I need to say. A <laughs> so you're the man. You're awesome. Uh, so in matching colors, first and foremost, I'm thinking about value. So value and every artist is going to say the same thing and if you've listened to any other artists you know that you know what i'm about to say value is the most important part so so when i'm mixing here the fact that you know the back of the dove here is intensely bright white you know light white excuse me and you know we've got some of our grays here um the those values and getting those values right is going to be the most important part then i can start to think about um, both uh, color or color temperature or intensity or, or color saturation chroma but, but first and foremost it's value and value will always do your heavy lifting so if the value is correct you pretty much are fine <laughs> if you get the value right um, you can almost paint the wrong colors and be just fine now that sounds maybe contrary but if you if you get your values spot on, you're good to go. I'm in, in you know in this in the dove here. Yes, largely I'm just gonna I just have to wrestle with value. But I do want to get some of these warm yellows and there's kind of there's some of those intense um, you know, oranges because we do know light is coming from the backside of the wing, and if I can get a little bit of those light effects. I want to. In order to get that, yes, I'm going to have to have value, but I'm also going to have to get some of the color temperature right, especially in this area. It's kind of warm orangey, it's uh, yellowy as it extends out, um, and then then it is still kind of a, a bluer, uh, it's a little cooler of um, the, each as each feather goes. And again, I want to get those, but I also don't want to get too bogged down in the little details because really, I want to focus on the important parts um, and really achieving good, the good overall work um, of, of capturing these things in space and making them work and not, yeah, it, I think small details, even though you're like, hey, aren't you working on a small detail right now? I'm like, well, I think it's a little important. That was an important one. So, so some things, and I think a lot of representational painting and is learning what's important to really include and what's not. You know, I knew that, for instance, that little detail there is kind of a warmer, yellowy. I really wanted the light again to feel kind of, kind of coming through. Those are the things you just pick up uh, on years of uh, practice. And let's see. Ernest, are you bored yet? No. Oh, okay. I'm gonna sit in here a different way. Okay. Agnes said, hi Vince, looking great. Thanks, Agnes. Now, there's there's a painter of birds. Uh, so, she, she, she probably doesn't want the attention, but uh, she's, a, she's a good painter of birds, Agnes. So, you should uh, check out her Instagram if she's willing to share it. Um, and see some of the bird paintings that she's made. So, um, artists helping artists, man. That's what it's all about. <laughs> well, let me also say, I mean, since we're talking about that, uh, Agnes is uh, as a patron of mine too. So, 
uh, bravo, thank you. Um, if you're watching the stream right now, you should just tip your hat uh, to uh, to Agnes because uh, she's uh, her, um, her generosity makes uh, makes things like this possible. Um, so uh, yeah, a little 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 uh, gratitude to Agnes. Thank you, Agnes, for being here, and thank you for your your faithfulness. Um, she said thank you. She said you're too kind, Vince. <laughs> Well, that's because you're watching the live stream. You don't know what happens behind <laughs> the scenes. Just kidding. Um, mm, oh, I'm getting tired. Getting tired. Uh, and also, they are coming home very fast. Yeah, yep. They, they had a bunch, bunch of errands to run, so. How many? I don't know. Multiple. I mean, could they're also going to big... Let's see, I mixed this color. Let's see if it's worth anything. Well, maybe. I don't know. It's a little... So a lot of times I'll mix these colors and then maybe I won't even use them. So. Uh, I'll say, oh yeah, this is this is looking good, or this is all right. And it's just not, maybe it's a little too intense, or or what have you. So, yeah, I don't know how I like it. Well, at some point, uh, I'm just gonna have to buckle down and um, make some bigger decisions on exactly what's happening. Uh, in in this wing and again making making those calls making uh saying all right probably each one of these feathers i'm kind of gonna have to describe it might get a little uh in this area here and if you're looking at the reference you can see that too it's probably going to get a little more painterly in here but I, I am going to have to describe probably the first five to six or seven feathers up here and do so in a way that works really well. And that's, that's what I would call kind of the, the important information that, uh, that's going to help the rest of it to work. Um, again, I don't want to get bogged down. I don't want to do too much. Um, and so we'll kind of get started here. Uh, these are, no, no, I'm kind of using I'm using the edge of you know this is a uh, this is I think technically a bright, um, but it's and in essence a flat. And so I'm using the edge of it. I'm kind of you know in, in trying to recreate some of the shape of this uh, feather here. Agnes asks, do you ever do color or value studies? Um, Agnes, I wish I had time. Uh, um, there's like there's not enough time. <laughs> It, so, so much of this, I, I, I regret to say, is like, um, I am, like, for instance, this, this commission, uh, if, if I'm going to make the most of it, I need to finish it by... Um, Next week? <laughs> well, that would be nice. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Not yeah, I, I've got to finish it by December. Um, and. This is piece one of seven. That's a lot of work. Uh, and, I, and I wish I had more time to um, give each painting a value study um, and color and value study. That would be, that'd be fun. Maybe someday uh, I'll, I'll get the freedom to do that. Uh, but right now I'm a little too locked in to having to work with what I have. I mean, and again, this, this kind of comes down to that whole, like if you, if you want to live from your art, you've also got to figure out how to balance all all of that. Uh, I mean, I'm. You, I mean, you've heard you heard my son here, who is with us on the stream today. I I'm. I don't want to sacrifice time with him, you know Tim him, uh, and miss and miss these years uh, simply because I. Um, I want to do a color study or I want to, you know, so there's, there's a lot of, a lot of things that I kind of
kind of have to decide on what I'm going to do. So I've already put some color down here. This is a little dark, but I really need to include this little, I don't even know my anatomy of the bird feather to what do you, to, what to even call this. What's the little stem in the middle of the, of the, need some, need some help moderator. I'm looking. <laughs> The middle, the middle part. Oh, I want to say flute, but I uh, know it's not. Not even close. No, no, okay. It's the Rachis. What? Rachis? I don't know. R-A-C-H-I-S. How do you say? Yeah, ask, you can ask Google. I'm yeah. doing it. <laughs> also, I might come back with that for the next live stream. You might come back for the next live stream? Yeah. Uh -huh. I think it's pretty fun. Yeah, and I'm also being kind of quiet, but only when you're not talking. <laughs> <laughs>
could see happening each time. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on that. And then, and then what, it, what surprises me is that that little bit of information always seems to do something like, oh wait, yeah, I guess, I guess it does work that way. Um, and provides that extra bit of uh, realism. Um, and I'm like, oh, it, I guess that's what happens. Uh, so I'm trying to still keep the brush work a little rough and I mean, it's probably hard to see, but this is really undone and I, I want to leave it that way. Um, and, I, and I try to do this anytime I'm working on any animal life is just leave a lot of rough brush stuff. Uh, just, you know, I mean, hey, let's be honest. If, if you're a, if you're a painter and you're living from your work, you've, you've done plenty of uh, dog portraits. I have too. Um, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not mad about it. Um, but I like to keep the brushwork very uh, alive and, and rough. And you know, this is gonna be the, s the same here as I just, uh, the last thing I wanna do is ruin some of that uh, that energy. At the same time, I need to work up against my background. That's my background colors. Um, and so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup. Because uh, in this area, I've, you know, I didn't, I didn't quite make it nice and tidy. So. So I'll, I'll bump into this a little bit here, create a little bit of, you know, do some, sometimes do things that I'm not happy with and I'm like, ah, let's fix that. And then, yeah, and then keep trucking along. It's great to have uh, A72 on. Oh, that was awesome. It's been a while. Great to have you on. Uh, Obviously, Agnes, I'm glad you're here. Means so we get to hang out just for a little bit. So. Hey, glad you're here. No. Yep. Uh, Diego, if you're still here, glad you're here. All right, that's right. Yeah, Diego the other day stayed on quite a bit. That was fun. We had, we had a good time. Agnes, what are you what are you working on right now? That was just a little bit of description. I'm gonna put a little bit of a little bit of a detail of another. And then you know what? That back wing is done. I'm not gonna mess with that anymore. I'm, you know, I, I mean, I guess I could. I see. I see one more thing I could add. Just a good, a good bit of information that I think will help. And if this is just a little thicker down here, there it is. That back wing has, in in my estimation, the right amount of information to be a successful painting. It is working, and uh, that, that's when I just walk away. You know, only thing I see is you know down here needs to be a little cleaned up. Um, but for the most part, you know, yep, there it is. Agnes so, said, "I'm working on a figure painting. I have an under painting going, and will be starting on the glazing today." Cool. Watching you during my lunch break at work right now. Awesome. Man, dude, your lunch break like, quality. <laughs> That's pretty lunch good. Break material. All right. That is pretty solid. <laughs> you only get one lunch break. Only one lunch break, Dad. <clears throat> Wait. Are you gonna do live stream after? Um. Uh. I am, yeah. I think I think I know what after, you're saying. After after um but after lunch I will. Can I do it with you? Yeah, if you want to. I mean I, I just don't need to be bored. And it's okay, I got um, I can you, play. You've got things to play with? Okay. 
and I bet things to color with. All right. My, uh, my hand's getting tired from like holding a bunch of brushes. It's usually what ends up happening is I don't really put them down. I just kind of keep going back and forth. And if you remember, I just have a few varying value brushes and, and I'm always bouncing around with those. So I want to see what happens here if I, yeah, it's not, not yellow enough. It's interesting how uh, and that's not cool enough. So there's always this searching I'm just finding and and you'll notice I just put it down. Uh, I was like, I'll, I'll work around it. I'll work over it um, until it starts to have too, too yellow. I don't like it. So I might have to go a little green. Green, just green energy against this more red energy of uh, the space here. See how, see how far we get. To create uh, just some of the color underneath here. And you know, my, my stroke, my mark is kind of, um, you know, each, each one is trying to hint at a feather. So even if we end up with some rougher brush marks that don't really, uh, don't really get anywhere, we're still kind of, kind of creating some of that, um, what would be there. You kind of use your mark to help with some of the textures too, you can. Yep, too, too yellowy. Too yellow? Yep, too much yellow. I want some of that there, that's gonna be really important. Um, but there's going to be a little bit of back and forth making it work. Another layer. Maybe before you live stream again, we take a little rest. Take a little rest? Yeah. All right, so we're we're kind of getting yeah, we're getting there, getting some of the little details in. Um, there's a kind of nice warm spot here. Chasing down some of those. And this is another time we can kind of find a few more of the drawing things. So maybe maybe that needed to come down a little farther, I thought. Um, and, you know, I'll try to decide, okay, how specific do I want to get even down down into here? How far does, does this go? Does this, you know, if I'm looking at this one shape here, as it comes off feather, you know, yeah, there's a little bit there, but then, you know, you can continue to see just a little lighter underneath there. And this, this is, this is all like, all right, what do I really want to include? Um, I want to find, that really good, good, good brush energy. How, uh, how hot is it in your neck of the woods, uh, Agnes, today? 
It's going to be blistering up here. 103 to 108 heat index. Mm. Sometimes I miss working out in the real world, but then on days like this. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm good. You sound like you're tired. <clears throat> Me? Yeah, because you yawn while you were. You know, sometimes you yawn when you're not even tired. Because <laughs> your brain's not getting enough oxygen. But I'm also all stuffed up because. I think I got whatever you guys had. Yep. We give sicknesses, that's for sure. Wow. And Agnes is part of the woods. It's 88 so far. What? It's been a little cooler than the last couple of days. What are we up to right now? We're up to... I guess we're only at 86. Right. No, we're at 88 now. It's not that late in the day. It's not supposed to hit... The highest it's supposed to go is 6 p.m. 99. Mm. It looks like tomorrow is going to maybe break 100. Gross. So, and, and I'll... So yeah, we're kind of working down here, just establishing some of these shapes and, you know, so far so good. Um, uh, I, I, won't, I won't get too much more detailed, but I, but I am looking in and I'm seeing some of these really fun, and this is, this is where you have to really get your value and your line. And I almost never do it right the first time so I, I have to come back at it and guess and try a couple of things so sometimes I'll, I'll you might have seen I just grabbed a direct uh, tube of tube paint for this really kind of intense under an under color and I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll keep this but we're gonna give it a shot anyway so I'm kind of seeing this area underneath catching some light. We know it's light on the other side, right? So I'm just going to put a few of those in and just see if, um, see if it works. I am, I'm way willing to just do something, find out it doesn't work and then bl blend it back out or, or something. So. Lay on yeah, it's gonna be laid on there. I wanna take a nap. I'm gonna take a nap, okay. Or if I or if if I just feel like holding down. Okay. This is a this is a good time for the uh the buffer brush and I'm just gonna work these in a little bit to see if see if I made a good call. I don't know. If not, we'll, we'll come back to it. I mean, uh, yeah, it's not working yet, so that's all right. Uh, and those are the times where you're like, hey, maybe maybe this will do it. Maybe it's kind of doing it, I don't know. Um, but we'll have to come back to that. Uh, I think if I finish it out the rest of the way, it will. Right, we got the Pocket 4K Lock Magic. <laughs> yeah, or we got upgraded the overall uh, camera, so maybe it's a little, maybe it's a little better. And then also we use the old camera for palette cam. Uh, so, so trying to, yeah, we're trying to up the game. You know, we want, we want something that's. It's valuable. Oh. 
Hey, if you want to, if you want to open that, would you would you do it in the next room? Agnes said she thinks it looks great. All right, here's uh. Here's where 100%. I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll get honest. Where where I'm like I'm not excited to do. This. I I think I have a little bit of uh, just like visual overload a lot of times when I'm looking at some areas, and uh, it just gets hard. I don't know how else to put it. I look at it and I'm like, oh, I don't. Um, this is this is not exciting to me. Um, and there's just a lot of, you know, each one of these feathers. Um, and so, uh, look, I'm just saying we all get there where it's, it's not an exciting thing. And you're like, oh man, um, I gotta get, gotta get this information in here and, you know, make it work. Agnes said, oh, I absolutely understand that pain. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it which, which is so funny, right? Because uh, here it is. It's supposed to be this. Uh, you're you're doing what you love, and and yet there's still this uh, part of you that is. Uh, there's just no other way to put it than just sheer. I'm going to speak for myself. I will speak for no one else. It is just blatant laziness, slothfulness. Um, just saying, ah. Oh, or even um, uh, do, doing the things that sort of like don't maybe matter or don't get the most bang for your buck um, uh, in painting uh, always gets a little. And those are the areas that I that I wish I could I could do a little swifter, and you know we just might kind of try that uh, in this section here. So yeah, so I'm just gonna kind of lay some color in, and. It needs needs something, but it still needs to be, you know, correct. But I, but I want to get something down to just give me a little bit of Sierra said it's really really bad outside. Just humid and yeah, but she's also like a ghost, so. <laughs> Literally, yeah. the sun burns her. Sierra, if you're watching this, I love you. If you're watching this 20 years from now, I love you. I've always loved you, and I'm so grateful that. Are you saying this to my wife? <laughs> you know what I'm this saying. It's a weird I'm, time to do this. I am speaking. In 20 years, if you're ever tired of Sean, you can. <laughs> <laughs> come back over here. No, 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 no. 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 Uh, okay. I was speaking. Yeah, you were speaking in terms but of we, putting words in my mouth. We understood that, right? Okay. Just twenty-year-old Sean, yeah. twenty years older Sean. Yeah. And dude, 50, hey, forty-nine. Come on, you like? Come on, you swift, my boy. You and Sean are the same height, but my dad's older than Sean. Yeah, why is that? Yeah, I know. Why did you stop growing? <laughs> Why, why am I not 7'2 or something? Yeah, you should be taller than David if that's how it works. Well, actually, that's not how it works. It doesn't. Actually, when you get older and older, it gets smaller and smaller. But they start shrinking eventually. Because your bones start falling apart. Yeah. Start losing things in your spine and I don't know how it works. Whew, it's the, you know, just joyful things we look forward to. Hey, but with age comes a lot of cool things too. Hey, I'm, I'm like I, honestly, in that painting now. honestly, I have been, uh, uh, I have really enjoyed every season quite a bit, um, e even now. Uh, I'm enjoying this season right now. And for the most part, 
it, I, I can say that with ease because not not much has changed. You know, just like not not a whole lot has changed. But. Georgia says your discs start compressing. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Georgia. Yeah, um, um, I won't ask. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you? finding joy in this season of COVID and crazy and mm. chaos? Um, well, I'll, I'll say this. I'm only taking in so much news and media. Yep, I stopped. Uh, I mean, I, and again, there's not, you know, I'm not saying run away and hide or anything like that, but, you know, there's there's a level to which... I had to run away and hide for a little bit. Yeah, well, then I... I Again, I used to have, uh, I mean, you know, I used to listen to, you know, NPR in the car and stuff. And uh, I just, uh, probably for the last, and I, I started this a little bit before uh, COVID, frankly, just because sometimes it's just inf too much information is too much information. Um, I found a little more rest and not having to think about it all the time um, or think about what's happening so you can really get overloaded yeah. really quick so so anyway yeah i've just uh this is uh, i would be a really exciting uh car ride mate uh i just i don't listen to anything not even any music i just uh drive drive in silence and... yep i rode with him to lincoln nebraska <laughs> so i i but but again um i i appreciate silence so Silence is not something um, that I get very much. Mm. So, I appreciate it. That being said, I have a friend of mine making music for these live streams, and and there will be music uh, eventually. You know, nothing, nothing big or uh, distracting, but um, s something to fill in the silences as I just stated wanting more silence um, so you'll notice uh, I, I'm creating like each of these marks is, is, is what we call just following form so I want to tell this space of like okay here's this wing coming out um, and you know then I'm telling a little bit of the musculature a little bit of uh, how the feathers are folding over so I'm kind of using that uh, mark as I, as I was doing it and similarly I'm kind of using the mark here to create uh, some of the kind of bird feather action and um, so, so that even if you know I'm not again I'm not like because there's nothing that frustrates me more and if you're one of those painters I'm sorry uh, but just like, you know, uh, almost robotically just saying, okay, this is this, this is this, and kind of working back between the two and not allowing some of the brush and just some of the energy of the moment just remain um, and let it be loose and let it be kind of unfinished and let the finished areas uh, do the work of making it interesting you know um, or an unfish and that balance between the two um, and so like some of these edges are gonna be more done some of them are not and I'm gonna just be okay with that and how how it ends up oh, and sometimes you Bump your white. That's all right. What? Oh no, you're good. You're good. Are you getting hungry? A little bit. A little bit? Not much. We have to wait until Mom and Mary get home. Well, that would be nice of us if we did that. Sometimes they might have had plans on their own. So maybe they were gonna go eat somewhere. Family plans, family planning. Well, those girls, they always go off. They, they, yeah, the, the girls go out and the guys stay home, is that how it works? Well, mostly the guys stay home. 
Because there are no girls in the house right now. No girls in the house. Just so everyone knows. There's only three boys. <laughs> well, technically there's four. Mm, yeah, don't don't forget. Well, forget like three and a half. TK. Yeah, but he's fixed. So well, like, I mean, you know. I mean, yeah. Still. Yeah. We're not, we're not, I don't fault him for that. No, I don't know. No, I'm not saying I fault him for that. <laughs> I'm just saying his masculinity is a little bit less. So, so, so sometimes I have like a little bit of like dry pain or something. We'll just stick in here, so you know, I'll just kind of lift that out. Um, just little things I, I notice kind of as I'm going, going along. Yeah, sometimes I'll do that. Got a you know, an Edge Pro gear. It's got a lot of magnets in it. Occasionally, I'll leave leave a tool there. So we've got uh, a little bit of a strange set up with the cam the i'm getting getting a couple more um uh, that sort of jazz coming uh later this week so we'll the kind of final setup for for live streams here. on continuing to do this um, and yep there may be some days where it's very much um, my young lad here playing alongside of me what? yep and another day where we're you know all hanging out Sean David hopefully, hopefully David will be joining us shortly just got back from some travel, some international travel. Should be very fun. Hey Ernest, if you're gonna play with us, can you scoot back from the camera? Yeah. I'm gonna put you back over here. Because it's really loud. <laughs> uh, Agnes wants to know, do you wash your brushes out every session? I do. Um, I, I don't know, but I, I don't know if it's the the thinner for the Ernest. Uh, yeah, we're just we're not gonna be able to play that way. It's too loud. It's too, sorry, bud. Um, and uh, it, uh, it I think it's maybe the both the thinner and how I how I work. I don't know. It was. Uh, But the paint dries out pretty quick for me, uh, and so so I do have to wash them, and I and I do wash them with uh, first I wash them out with uh, Turpinoid Natural, and then from there I uh, I uh, then wash them with soap as well. I had some nice brush soap, and now I'm just using hand soap. So you know. <laughs> Again, I, uh, my, my, my channel should probably be called, hey, uh, it's okay to do whatever. <laughs> don't, don't sweat it. Um, you, you too can be a painter. <laughs> it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be right, doesn't, you know. Uh, other people are, are just very opinionated about. I'm opinionated about some things when it comes to painting, but usually what type of brush, how to clean it, when to clean it, or never clean it, or uh, that sort of thing. Um, maybe maybe another 40 years, uh, I'll be really opinionated about it. Um, I'm just I'm just not there. What's uh what's what's your routine? You, you 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 share your routine with uh, the people who hear, that who, so they can hear, so they can hear a real painter, um, and and hear what what a real painter does, because I, I don't know I'm. Agnes said probably kind of silly of me being a painter, but I hate washing brushes. I think I wash mine out once a month and All otherwise right. store them with oil. On the brushes so they don't dry. 
Uh, that's probably, uh, I, and I will say that's probably 100% better than what I do. Um, they probably last longer. And yeah, that's my. Those are the things. It's like, so so so. Here's the, here's here's what I, I I sort of appreciated about my Agnes and I. We we've talked about um, kind of education, art education, and what um, what should one do, and what should become kind of important, and what uh, yeah, a lot of questions on that side, and. Um, my art education didn't really address those things. Uh, it, it wasn't really very helpful. And um, I, you know, I'm sure there was a washing brushes day where they kind of talked about it. Uh, but, but uh, it, you know, much, much of how I learned was, hey, here's uh, here's some tools, um, paint, brushes, thinner, uh, and okay, you have that. If I asked you to please not do that over by the camera, then you would hear it back. It's just really loud in the microphone. And so, uh, so the long things I think I missed out in that respect and so I have to uh, I have to just kind of make up for it as I go and try to do the best and you're like hey isn't there a million YouTube videos you can watch yeah there probably is <laughs> and I can learn a lot um, but again this all, a, lot, a lot of that comes down to time and um, and I don't know you, you get in, get in kind of the mode of if it ain't broke, don't fix it, type thing, which is not saying is a good way to be, but yeah, she said she keeps hers in walnut oil and then washes them with Dawn and some other brush soap. That's good. Okay, so that there's the answer. There's the real answer <laughs> to how to care, how to care uh, for your brushes. Uh, I I trust Agnes uh, on that answer more than myself, and I'm not even. I'm not even trying to be silly about this. I'm, uh, I, I, I would, because, because I know that uh, I know that she's researched uh, a lot of these things uh, way more than I. So, all right. So I got to kind of, you know, we're we're getting to, um, you know, a, a space of, a space of, of finish. I mean. It, this is this is kind of the, the time frame where I I'm gonna have to decide okay how far am I gonna take a lot of these things um, and um, you know how much do I want to try to you know just do a little bit of these details here and there and how how much does that help the painting be a success versus um, it start to get too too detailed you know is you know when it's working it's working so I, didn't, I wanted to just soften these just a little bit um, and I, I think we're getting pretty close Being done. Well, with the bird anyway. Well, and we, we are gonna have to stop pretty soon. Uh, yeah, I'm for, kind of hungry. Yeah, I get kind of hungry. It is past our normal lunch time, or we, well, at least when we begin eating lunch. So. Those girls. Don't <laughs> How about calling them Mom and Mira? What? But calling him Mom and Mira. Mom and Mira. There we go, thanks. Spending too much time with uh, your step grandpa. Hope he's not watching. <laughs> So 
are you gonna do with the feet? Um, do they just like tuck them up? Yeah, they they tuck them under, and I yeah I've. I've not gotten there yet because I need to. I need to do some online research. So, I mean, well, just basically dump, dump flying pictures, just looking those up and kind of seeing. And, um, well, we will get there. Yeah, it just looks like they just kind of hold them up a little bit. So all you can really see is just the, like the reddish orange of their feet. And um, it is interesting the uh, the the dove is uh, here. It's like I can't see. Um, th this is this is a uh, pure invention right now. <laughs> Because <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't have, um, I don't have any information um, on this on this backside because it's, it's uh it's completely you know, this, the the feathers were variegated and different and so, um, you know I might if I, if I'm feeling daring I might flip out a um, like another light colored as though this is also being lit from behind and Agnes says the shadows where the flight feathers overlap are looking really nice thank you thank you thank you um I'm a little way too hungry now <laughs> A little, a little way too hungry now. Okay, well, all right. Even I didn't have a snack. You didn't even have a snack. Oh, I'm such a bad dad. Okay, um, I think probably it's a might be a good time to Take a break. just wrap it up for now. And I may have gotten the message too. I didn't check my messages, but uh, that. Uh, uh, someone else is on the way home as well. So, what? Right. so we've got uh, we've got a little more to work to do here. Um, if uh, if you're here, thanks Agnes again for being here. Thanks for uh, Cindy if you're still here, um, and and whomever else. Uh, Georgia. Georgia, Georgia, thank you. We'll hopefully be back in uh, about an hour and a half or or thereabouts, and we will wrap this thing up. We'll get some detail here, um, and we'll figure out exactly what we're gonna do. Uh, with uh, with the, uh, the the feet. So thanks very much, everyone, and we'll see you this afternoon.